In this video, we'll spend some time looking at the background of what everybody should know about instructional video that I think will make it easier to place the videos we're creating in the right context. So what should everybody know? Well, let's start with a bit of a puzzle. I'll show you a quote and you think about what year is that quote from? And also who said it? So the quote goes like this. Books will soon be obsolete in the public schools. Scholars will be instructed through the eye. It is possible to teach every branch of human knowledge with the motion picture. Our school system will be completely changed inside of 10 years. And we have been working for some time on the school pictures and it proves conclusively the worth of motion pictures in chemistry, physics, and other branches of study, making the scientific truths difficult to understand from textbooks plain and clear to children. So this quote is from 1913. It is by Thomas Edison, who gave that when he was interviewed about the future of the motion picture and education. Well, back, back then, motion picture, now a video. But what happened? Uh, if you add 10 years to uh, 1913, you certainly know that didn't happen. It, the education system wasn't transformed. And uh, if you look at the history of education uh, and videos, uh, you'll see that that hasn't happened for many decades until quite recently. So in the 1940s and 60s, there was a lot of public information films, uh, children's programming on television. In the 70s, it was open university, educational videos on TV. In the US, it was schoolhouse rock. In the 1980s, there was a big uh, hope around VCR and laser discs uh, changing the face of education. And then again, that same hope was put into the CD-ROMs in the 1990s. But none of these things have actually made videos integral to learning. It was always a secondary source of information, secondary ways of approaching the material and for uh, instructors to interact with uh, their students. But uh, now I think we are uh, in a different state. But let's first think about what are some of the specifics of videos that may have made it so difficult to uh, for video to actually make much headway into education. And there are, I think, three areas uh, in which we need to pay attention. So there's the consumption of videos, the production, and distribution. So in terms of consumption, I think we have to remember that video is a very linear medium, which means the navigation can be somewhat difficult. If there's no easy way to skin or scan a video, skipping is also not that easy. It's very much bound to the equipment uh, that uh, the video is being transmitted over and and that very often is bound to a particular place so it's not if you compare that to a book um, that is very different a book you can take anywhere with you it's, it's just a book is a book doesn't need any additional equipment and it's very easy to skim scan skip around and so on and of course unlike a, a book videos are also much more difficult to produce it's very expensive to do it uh, you can't just have one person do it you all generally need more than one uh, person in a team uh, once you've produced it, it's very difficult to modify, and it ages quite quickly. And it's not just the content, it's also the people, hairstyles, uh, clothing, and so on. So videos very often uh, go out of, out of style. And then if you want to modify that, you pretty much have to record a new video. Whereas with a book, if you want to republish an old text, you simply uh, publish it again, maybe add some new pictures, uh, a more modern layout, and uh, with very little expense, relatively, uh, you have been able to um, update an old text with a video that is not possible. And of course, even with all of these things, if you solve them, then you still have the issue of compatibility, of delivery. Uh, with delivery, there's the issue of media compatibility. There's also the cost uh, that uh, has to do with bandwidth requirements. In the old days, it was uh, postal requirements, uh, file size, and, and so on. So these are all the things that were always a problem with, with video. With video. And of course, uh, that if you take that into the school environment, then you know that's even more more difficult. So if you, uh, many people remember the uh, video equipment, TVs, and and these two as being rolled into classrooms, and then it always took up a lot more time, uh, and so it really had to be worth the teacher's time to use a video in a classroom, and uh, that also has I think held back video as a medium of education. But uh, as I indicated. Right now, I think things are changing. Where I would say uh, that we're actually in the middle of an, a video revolution in education. And what is behind that revolution? Well, it's a very clearly YouTube. YouTube has made a tremendous difference in the way uh, video 
has permeated the world of learning and education. And uh, so what are the components of this revolution? Well, first, uh, the uh, ease of production. So we talked about how difficult production is, and that, of course, has changed a lot. And, and YouTube didn't introduce these means of production, but it actually uh, stimulated a lot more development in, the, in those areas. So there's a lot of cheap technology. Uh, a lot of people have developed skills by creating these videos. So it's, you no longer have to uh, be a film expert to create videos. And uh, also, it's much easier to update videos to create new ones. And um, as all this has been going on, there's a new language of video has developed. Uh, so, so people are now exploring different ways of communicating through video rather than just the old ways of what we're used to seeing from on TV and on film. Uh, but what YouTube has also done now that we've produced the video is increase the ease of distribution. So, of course, all of the video is now distributed online. And uh, it's very cheap, uh, sometimes completely free, and both for the distributors and for the consumers. And it is very mobile, so you're no longer tied to one place. So, so all of a sudden, video is much more like a book used to be. You can take it with you anywhere, even though there are still some technical requirements. And that has all contributed to increase in the ease of consumption. So uh, videos are now offered pretty easy with captions. It's a lot easier to add additional ways of, of interacting with the content. Uh, people can increase the speed of playback and then listen at a higher speed to get uh, more out of the videos more quickly. Um, it's easier to more easy to navigate because, of course, all of it is done on a mobile device. You can easily swipe around with a finger. You can put bookmarks in and, and things like that. And, and often you can also combine short videos into bigger holes. That's something, for example, that, that Linda is doing. And this revolution, I think, has brought some consequences that are also worth uh, exploring. So first, there are a lot of new pedagogies that have developed as a result of the sort of increased ease of producing, consuming, and distributing videos. So uh, MOOCs are perhaps one of the, um, one of the bigger uh, phenomena of recent years, where, which pretty much is using the opportunity of creating relatively cheap videos and uh, putting them as online courses that are then available to a large number of people. But also, even within the classroom, uh, this new pedagogy has uh, um, developed. It's called the flipped classroom, where the teacher is prepares videos ahead of time with the content, and then during the classroom, just focus on practice. And actually, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm creating this video for people to watch before the workshop, and then they will. Um, uh, then you don't have to waste time on me explaining what the flipped classroom is and what these things are during the workshop and then just focus on how to uh, make the most um, out of the materials that we want to develop and how to get some practice in. Uh, there's also a huge growth in informal learning. Everybody has uh, learned something on, on YouTube, whether it's being how to fix a washing machine or how to... Uh, uh, how to do math, how to play the piano, how to, you know, how to <laughs> improve their learning of calculus. And, and that can all happen outside the school in many, many areas. And uh, of course, there are also other things that are happening in the schools, such as capturing lectures um, that can then be replayed to students and so on. Now, uh, of course, there are many new platforms. And uh, the most obvious is YouTube, but there's also Vimeo. So there are many more ways of sharing the videos. Uh, there are other bandwidth providers who can even help you distribute the videos yourself if you don't if you don't want to use YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, there are many providers for lecture capture, and uh, also I think the biggest platform really that that has uh, grown alongside video has in kind of they mutually enable each other is smartphones that are both great video consumption devices but also video production devices. And all of this has uh, sort of contributed to the growth of new institutions in, in the broadest possible sense. So um, I think YouTube channels are sorts of institutions. On YouTube, you can, anybody can start a channel and start posting videos on, a, on an educational topic. And many people have done that. And we'll have a look at some of them. And uh, one of them uh, is uh, Khan Academy, which was uh, started off as just a YouTube channel. And now it's a big uh, nonprofit that has hundreds, um, maybe even thousands of videos on different topics that that hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have learned from, uh, including myself. There are many, pro uh, m many video providers now that provide commercially, uh, commercial videos or, or paid for videos. Linda.com, which was 
uh, sold from um, Billions to LinkedIn, which is now part of Microsoft. Uh, there's Udemy, a competitor to Lynda, Skillshare, and so on. There are many, um, many opportunities for people to both share the videos they made and also learn from people who made these videos. There are many m uh, platforms where people can share their courses, like edX or Coursera, uh, or Future Learn in the, in the UK. There's some MOOC providers uh, that, uh, again, provide probably by now thousands of courses that people can learn from, and those courses are usually built around video. Uh, there is the Great Courses platform, which started in the 1990s as, as an audio lecture provider, but it has now branched out into videos, and again, there are many, uh, many videos that, that you can subscribe to and, and watch, uh, whole entire university courses. And there's a, a recent entry into this market it's called Masterclass that does really highly produced video um, uh, courses from some of the top people in their, in their uh, profession be their musicians, film directors, uh, sp sports people, and so on. So that just kind of shows us that we're in a new space when it comes to instructional uh, video. And then in the next video, we're going to have a look at the different formats of instructional videos um, and what are some of the options for us on there.